What is up, YouTube? It is Doki or Doki Style Gaming, and I am back at it again with another Godfall video for you all today. And I should have known, but like clockwork, the second I drop a video on Godfall, breaking down just about everything we know, we get some more information giving us some more stuff that we need to know. So we got a brand new developer blog that dropped today going over a lot more information on the Power Play shard system, Power Play reworks, and and we actually have an ETA now on when the actual free update is going to drop along with what it's actually called. So like I always say what I always see any more of those time because there's a lot to get into. Let's hop straight into this blog and straight into this info. Now in the first blog we did get a look at the locked shard list for all of the Valor plates and now we have an updated image where we get to see them all unlock. Now currently we still don't know all of the Valor Play shards so far, but in this blog post, we're getting four more to break down. We'll be going over Aegis Horn, which I know a lot of people are going to be hype about, Bulwark, Vertigo, which I am surprisingly pretty hyped for, and Phoenix. Meaning they're saving my boy Hinterclaw for last, but <laughs> let's go over everything that we got so far in this blog post. So it starts by saying, welcome back Florians. In our last blog post, we revealed Valor Plate Shards, a brand new feature that will let you truly live out your ultimate Valor Plate power fantasies. Valor Plate Shards are powerful new abilities that are thematically tied to each Valor Plate, setting their play styles apart in fresh and exciting ways. We've been thrilled to see the excitement and discussion from the initial reveal, which is why we're happy to be back with a new blog post to cover some of the more nuanced mechanics behind Valor Plate Shards. Now the post went on to say that the best part about Valor Play Shards is that you are not locked into just one option. While players may want to gravitate towards only using the strongest options to optimize their builds, you will be able to mix and match their favorite two shards to create unique and godlike synergy. We want players to be able to express themselves and find their own unique playstyle preference by being able to use multiple shards. Now what we know so far is that we will be able to unlock four different shards for each Valor Plate and we actually get a brand new look at the new UI system in the game for us. And it shows some of the Valor Play shards unlocked. It shows that there's going to be multiple shard slots and how the shards are going to look. Now, something that is very, very interesting about this picture as well that I don't think anybody has talked about or is talking about is that if we look at the bottom of our screen, we see loadouts. Now, I literally just mentioned this in my video yesterday that one of the quality of life fixes coming with the new update that I want to see are loadouts for our Valor Plates. With more loot coming into the game and more ways to build our Valor Plates, it will be essential for us to have multiple loadouts for multiple play styles for the same particular Valor Plate. So I'm hoping that we're going to get multiple loadouts for each Valor Plate. It'll definitely come in handy when it comes to building our Valor Plates, but also will be a lot less time consuming whenever we're going back to the Sanctum, we don't have to completely re rearrange our builds before we head back out into the next mission because all we have to do is swap to the loadout that you want and then start up the next run. So I am super happy for this, even though it has not even been mentioned anywhere in this blog post. I just wanted to point it out because I saw it in the picture of the new UI update. Now back into the blog post, cause I got a bit sidetracked. It went on to say that other major features we are introducing today is the ability to power up our Valor Plates through its shards. As you progress in your journey through Empyrean, obtaining and then upgrading all of the Valor Play shards will also affect the strength of the Valor Plates themselves. And they went into a bit of how it works. They said after obtaining all four Valor Plate shards, it will become an Ascendant Valor Plate and will unlock a second passive ability, giving it a new useful power in combat. It then goes on to say that obtaining Valor Plate shards is just the beginning as each individual shard can be upgraded up to five times to increase its power. It says fully upgrading all four Valor Plate shards will unleash its full potential and will essentially turn your Valor Plate into an exalted Valor Plate, unlocking a third and final passive ability. So yeah, our Valor Plates are about to get 
crazy powerful like the shards themselves already seem super unique and super strong just breaking them down in the last valor plate shard overview but now we're going to be able to upgrade the power of our valor plates in general Whew, we are about to get incredibly powerful in this game and i am super hyped for it and more passive abilities yeah especially when we start breaking them down <laughs> it's going to get pretty crazy now before we go into all four of the new valor play shard abilities that we're going to get to check out they did say that as a reminder please note that the information via their numbers visuals and descriptions are not final and are subject to change before the update goes live granted none of the actual descriptions have numbers they're all just x amount so that's not really too important right now but let's go over the first Valor play shown off in this blog post and check out all of their shards. And now, new passive abilities. So first, we are going to start with Phoenix. So like last time, I'm gonna let y'all take a quick look at the clip and let me know what you all notice from it right away. Now, on top of a brand new weapon, of course, what we just saw in action was the first Valor Play Shard for Phoenix called Way of the Phoenix. It says when your health is reduced to zero, restores X amount of health to you and your allies and unleashes a shockwave that blinds nearby enemies and deals X amount of fire damage. Now, there is a cooldown for it, but again, no real numbers are shown for any of these Valor Play Shards. So if this sounds familiar, it's essentially a much more powerful and team-oriented Amulet of the Betrayer, but for Phoenix. Pretty much when you die, you are resurrected <laughs> as if you are rising from the ashes and it heals yourself and your teammates, but also deals a shockwave that burns enemies and blinds them as well. And for just the first Valor Play Shard, this is pretty OP. I already know how many people love their Amulets of the Betrayer, and the fact that now you don't even need to equip that on Phoenix, meaning you can use that slot for a different item and just have this shard on her. And now that we know that the shards are upgradable, you might be able to heal even more health and deal even more damage. So this is a killer shard for Phoenix right off the bat. The next shard we have for Phoenix is called Soul of the Inferno. Whenever you inflict Ignite, gain a flame charge that grants X amount of weapon technique fire damage and you get max X amount of charges. It says you'll then deal X amount of weapon technique fire damage while you have at least, again, X amount of flame charges. Essentially giving your weapon techniques guaranteed fire damage. So again, when it comes to building your Valor Plates, now there's certain items that you don't even need that would generally give you Inflict Element on Weapon Technique because her Valor Plate Shard can essentially do that on its own. And Fire Damage is already a insanely powerful element. If you know anything about it, you know how much damage Fire does. So this is always dope. Next, we have the Wildfire Strike Shard, and it says whenever you hit an ignited enemy with a charged attack, you consume Ignite and then ignite surrounding enemies for X amount of the consumed damage. Yes, again, I love when Valor Plates now have the ability to consume without having consume items on. But not only that, this one is now an AOE consume. This is going to be killer. Not just an AOE consume, an AOE fire damage consume. Fire damage is just so strong in this game. And the fact that that's going to be upgradable, man, Phoenix is going to be a beast. And the more we keep going into Phoenix, the more she's sounding like a damage dealing support. Honestly, more than Aegisworn, and we'll get into it when we break down his shards. But the fact that her first shard, Way of the Phoenix, will be able to heal you and allies whenever you go down, but also essentially doing an AoE shockwave and blinding nearby enemies is insane. And then with this ability being able to ignite surrounded enemies, again, she's very support oriented, but also damage dealing like crazy. She's definitely seeming more like a DPS support. 
Now the last shard we have for Phoenix is called Breath of Fire and it brings back up the Vengeance Meter. It says X amount of ignite damage you deal is stored in your Vengeance Meter. Whenever you perform a Petrifying Slam while your Vengeance Meter is full, you expend your Vengeance Meter to project a cone of a flame that deals fire damage equal to the amount expended. Now again, another very useful tool, and even though I think it's gonna determine on the radius of that cone, it's still pretty dope that Phoenix is getting so many AOE type attacks. Now, when it comes to her passives, we already know what her main one is. We have whenever you perform polarity attacks, you deal fire damage and inflict ignite. But now when you upgrade her with her Valor Play shards, her ascended form will give her X amount of chance to enter rampage whenever you inflict ignite. And then her exaltive passive that you'll gain as well is X amount of ignite power while your life stones are fully charged. And again, anything that gives you more ignite damage or just fire damage in general is super powerful. And I can't wait to see some of the builds and I can't wait to mess around with her build personally. But now let's move over to Aegis Horn. Now Aegis Horn, I was looking very forward to when we first got a look at the Valor Play Shards in general, cause I was curious to see how Aegis Horn was gonna be because he's always been labeled as the support of tank. And, like, and even when I try to build him, I try to build him for more of a support rather than just tank because it's pretty easy to make tanks in this game that can take a lot of damage. So I was honestly hoping that we get some support abilities for Aegis Horn, but honestly, Aegis Horn's shards is going to turn him into just a straight up tank. He is going to be, if this was a looter shooter, a bullet sponge. <laughs> it is unreal how tanky Aegis Horn is about to be. So some players might love that because again, now we have a true tank in the game to just tank as much damage as you possibly can. But that support role that he was always claiming to have, it doesn't seem like it's gonna to be too reflective in these shards. But like always, let's first take a look at the first video that was shown for his first Valor Play shard called the Beetle Technique. So after watching that, if you caught it, this is a pretty big deal for Aegis Horn, or honestly just combat in the game. But now with the Beetle Technique Valor Play Shard, you can parry red power attacks. And not only does it allow you to parry red power attacks, you gain over health whenever you parry a red power attack. The only attacks in the game that are legit unblockable, now you can block with Aegis Horn and get over health in the process. Meaning, Aegis Horn can block all damage in the game, or at least parry all damage in the game, which is insane. Next, we have the Aegis Strike. It says, whenever you block or parry, X per amount of that damage that is prevented is stored into your Vengeance Meter. It says, double the damage stored when parried, but then it also says, whenever you perform a Shield Bash while your Vengeance Meter is at least at 50%, you expend your Vengeance Meter to deal damage to enemies in a straight line equal to the amount expended. So this is very interesting now not only are you able to store damage via your blocks and parries you'll be able to re-release that energy back out in a straight line to enemies essentially doing the damage that they dealt to you this ability sounds super fun and will be interesting to see some of the builds messing around with this one. Now the next shard is definitely one of my favorites because again, this is one of the few that actually ties into more of a supportive role and it's called the Stasis Banner. Now it says apply stasis to all enemies inside your banner for X amount of seconds. So again, stasis essentially just freezes enemies in place, letting you deal damage to them or perform takedowns if you can. But what is also unique about this shard is that you also gain over health whenever you hit an enemy in stasis. So while your banner is out and is freezing enemies, every time you hit them, you're gonna be gaining over health. You don't even have to kill them, just hit them and deal some damage and you'll be able to get over health again 
adding more to the tankiness role of Aegis Horn. Now the last shard for Aegis Horn that they went into is called the Way of the Shell. You deal X amount of weapon techniques damage while you have more than X amount of overhealth. Now again, because just about every shard is about giving you a crazy amount of overhealth. And again, if you're already playing Aegis Horn, you're probably building him for some form of overhealth. But with this shard, you'll be able to deal increased weapon technique damage, which is always good, especially if you build for proper weapon technique damage that makes it somewhat spammable. Yeah, this is going to be a very useful shard to use on Aegis Horn for sure. Now, lastly, his passive abilities, which essentially just, like I said, make him even more of a tank. So his basic passive ability, we already know he takes 5% less damage. Now his ascendant form will give him X amount of overhealth retention, which is already killer. And then his exalted form is while above a certain amount of overhealth, his attacks cannot be interrupted, which is so useful on so many Valor Plates as is. So the fact that this is about to be a passive for Aegis Horn is insane because there is an augment that lets you do this as well, but now you don't even need to use that augment, meaning you can free up a slot to put on a different augment, which is gonna completely change your builds as well. That's why I'm loving these Valor Play Shards because now it'll gives you a bit more freedom for your actual build. Because some of these shards are items that you have on as gear or have on as augments, and now that you can equip these shards on top of your basic build, you can swap out some of those other items or augments for other things that will make your build even stronger. So I am super hyped for his passive abilities. But again, like I said, most of the abilities we went into with Aegis Horn is turning him into a pure tank, which isn't a bad thing, but I definitely would have liked to see a little more supportive abilities for his Valor Play shards. Now, moving on to Vertigo, she definitely shocked me pun intended, but in the same vein as Illumina, where she was one of the Valor Plays that I just never messed around with, not because they weren't good, just because there was other ones that I preferred to play with, and in terms of elements, I never really cared for the air or shock element, even though I know it was really good for doing breach damage. But taking a look at her Valor Play shards now, she is definitely a game changer Valor Play, and honestly, her play style is more of a magician. She's all about summoning lightning now <laughs> and we'll just take a quick look at the first shard in action and then we'll break the rest of them down So the video we just watched is called A Way of the Storm. It says whenever you breach a shocked enemy, they become electrified. An electrified enemy is periodically dealt with X amount of air damage and arcs chain lightning to another nearby enemy. It says chain lightning deals X amount of air damage, inflicts shock, and arcs to additional nearby enemies and the damage is increased by X amount per shock stack on an electrified enemy. Meaning, you are essentially turning the entire battlefield, if you can proc this properly and chain lightning properly, you're essentially electrifying the entire field. Now, again, it's gonna be all about your build and if you can breach properly, but again, this might change the way people build Vertigo, which I'm sure is always the goal when we get new updates like this, is to mess around with new builds. But now, building for primarily breach with Vertigo seems like a great way to go in terms of turning everything into an electrical current on the battlefield. But let's move on to the second one called the Arc Technique. Whenever you perform a death blow or soul shatter an enemy, there is an X amount of chance to chain lightning across to a nearby enemy. Again, summoning more lightning and chaining lightning to other enemies on the map. And similar to Way of the Storm, it says chain lightning deals X amount of air damage, inflicts shock, and arcs to additional nearby enemies. But on the arc technique, it also says you can increase the chance to create chain lightning by X amount of stacks on a defeated enemy. So again, Vertigo is about to be all about summoning and creating lightning everywhere, <laughs> especially when we get into this next one, which I personally feel like will synergize very well with Wave of the Storm. Now, the next shot we're going over for Vertigo is called 
call lightning, which is exactly what it sounds like. Whenever you hit a shocked enemy with a charged heavy attack, consume shock and summon a lightning bolt that deals air damage equal to X amount of the consumed damage dealt. Now on top of this, the lightning bolt also blinds nearby enemies. Again, we are now summoning a lightning like crazy with vertigo. This is super dope. Again, anything that gives me a chance to consume without using items to is always welcome. Now her last shard is called Shock Strike. Whenever you inflict shock, you gain a lightning charge, up to X amount of charges. Whenever you hit an enemy with a spectral blow, you expend all lightning charges and deal X amount of air damage to nearby enemies for each charge expended. And whenever you're inflicting air damage, you'll be inflicting shock. And if you inflict shock and those stacks are high, you'll be able to chain lightning. Just the potential with the vertigo is about to be insane for chaining lightning and doing massive air and shock damage. Now, lastly, we have her passive abilities, which her normal one is Petrifying Slam deals air damage and inflicts shock. Her ascended passive ability is X amount of chance whenever you inflict shock to imply an extra stack, which is something you definitely want for those chain lightning. And then lastly, her exalted passive ability is plus X amount of shock power and plus X amount of shock duration. So yeah, I'm liking everything so far that I'm seeing about Vertigo. Like I said, her builds, I feel like are going to get pretty crazy when it comes to chaining lightning and crowd control. I don't typically see too many Vertigo builds out there, but with these Valor Play shards, I could definitely see people messing around with her and getting some crazy builds out of her. Now, lastly, before we get into the last bit of information in this blog post, which is pretty important, so definitely stick around, but we still have one more Valor Play to break down all of their Valor Play shards, and this one is for Bulwark, a Valor Play that I know a lot of people love, and if you already like Bulwark, this is about to turn Bulwark into a DPS god. His damage is about to be unreal and insane. So like always, let's take a first look at the video showing off his first Valor Play shard, and then we'll break it down along with the rest of them and his new passive abilities. So, I don't know if you noticed, but that one was called Crushing Blow. It says you can now overcharge your charged heavy attacks, costing a bit of your health for a X amount of seconds. The overcharged attack deals up to X amount of additional physical damage and applies the marker fragility, which was what we were just seeing in that video. <laughs> Whenever he would glow red, he was overcharging his heavy attack, but it was also draining his health. But it is a risk reward type situation because the more health you drain, the stronger your over health damage will be. And again, physical damage is one of the strongest elements in the game, physical and bleed. So yeah, this is already a very useful and very powerful power play shard for Bulwark. The next shard we got for him is called Blood Rage Technique. During a Rampage, you gain X amount of physical damage and X amount of bleed power. Now it also says that during Rampage, Weapon Technique and Polarity Attacks deal physical damage and inflict bleed. Like, I don't even know what to say to this. Like, that's just ridiculous. And again, the fact that you can still upgrade all of the shards meaning that those stats are probably going to get even higher the amount of damage bulwark is about to be putting out is going to be unreal and again having weapon techniques and polarity attacks guarantee physical and bleed procs is super useful because now again those are stats that you don't need on either augments or gear pieces meaning you could swap them out for something that will add even more power to your build now, moving on to the next Valor Play Shard for Borg, it's called Will of the Unbroken. While Polarize gain X amount of damage per second and lose X amount of health per second though. But whenever you consume Bleed while Polarize, restores health equal to the amount of damage 
dealt. If your health drops below a certain amount, you are no longer polarized. Now again, this is another one of those risk reward type situations where you will be losing some health, but gaining some additional damage. Now, polarized doesn't last too long unless you build for it, so it's not nothing too crazy, but if you can manage it properly, you could probably deal some insane damage. And if you have a proper consume build, you can probably maximize this shard out extremely well. Now, the last shard for Bulwark is, again, I don't know why we're making him this strong. Bulwark has always been a pretty powerful Valor Blade, but man, this is just about to make him even stronger. It's called Way of the Bull, and whenever you perform a fully charged Sundering Slam, you consume bleed and gain x amount of physical damage for x amount of seconds for each enemy that lost bleed stacks so if you are proccing bleed on multiple enemies and then consume that bleed damage all of those enemies that already lost that bleed damage you'll be able to deal even more physical damage to those enemies if they don't die from your consume like that's just it's it's unreal how strong Bulwark is about to be. Like, I can already see this being most people's go-to on day one and trying to unlock all of his power play shards. Like, it's about to be unreal to see how many people are gonna be playing Bulwark. Now, unless the last few power play shards we're gonna get to see are game-changing as well. I mean, hey, they're holding off Hinterclaw for a reason, potentially. So, hopefully they are really good, but unless they're just super game-breaking, game-changing, I can see a lot of people, especially with how popular Bulwark already is, gravitating toward Bulwark when this new update drops. Now, lastly for Bulwark, we have his passive ability. Now, we have his normal one that's already on him, which is Petrifying Slam deals physical damage and inflicts bleed. And then we have his Ascendant one, which is unreal. His timing attack consumes bleed. It's just why? <laughs> that's so strong. And then his Exalted is even stronger because it's increased bleed power in bleed duration like Borg's god like at this point he is a dps god in this game <laughs> he's going to be unstoppable in terms of damage like i already can't wait to build for bill Borg. like it's about to be insane but now moving on to the last bit of information that we got from this blog post they went on to say that there is also one last exciting piece of news we want to share with the community and some larger details on the update itself they said that we are happy to confirm that this update will be called the exalted update and will be free to every user of godfall regardless of what version you own challenger base game deluxe edition or ascended edition additionally they said we are currently targeting a deployment of this update in april which i pretty much suspected somebody even asked me that in the comment section yesterday and i was like it'll probably drop mid-april and with tiny tina's wonderland getting ready to come out literally in about a week it seems like they want to give that release a little bit of breathing room before they release anything else with one of their other games so i'd be suspecting it'd be coming out in april because again that is the start of q2 and most of their launches when they are given a quarterly update is typically the first month of that quarter so we at least have a timeline on when it'll be coming out in april we just don't have the official date for it but again april is literally in like two weeks so I'm already pretty hyped for this. Now, they also said that they still have one more blog post lined up to reveal the final details on Valor Plate Shards and potentially the last few Valor Plates that we haven't seen yet. And it will include how to unlock them. So it says, stay tuned for more information. They said, we are thrilled and humbled to have this community along for the ride and we can't wait to reveal more details in the near future. So yeah, that is pretty much everything that we got in just this update today. Again, I am super hyped for these changes that we are getting with Godfall's Valor Plate system, but I'm still curious to see what else we're gonna be getting. Again, just even some of the pictures that they showed off, we got a look at the new UI, so clearly we're going to begin in that again we got a tease what looks like at a loadout systems coming to the game and then now it looks like all of the pedestals that the valor plates are on will indicate what version of a valor plate they are whether it be extended or exalted and they have different nodes that light up depending on the shards that you have unlocked for them so definitely a lot of in-game changes a lot of 
rework changes and then of course some quality of life changes are coming to the game and i can't wait to see the patch notes when this update drops because i'm sure there's so much more that they haven't even gone into and of course i hope you breaking that all down when it drops so hopefully you all enjoyed this video i know it was a long one and thank you all for watching to the end if you did how if you did stay to the end drop in the comment section bulwark is going to be a god <laughs> just so i know that you legit stay to the end of this video <laughs> because i know it's a long one but man bulwark is about to be a beast so that's all i got for this video guys thank you all for watching like always be sure to leave a like if you liked the video if you didn't still leave a like because nobody's going to see that dislike and be sure to join the discord if you haven't we got links to that in the video description i have lfgs guides builds breakdowns and so much more in there so if you haven't joined definitely join along with following the twitch channel link to that is in the description also other than that though that's all i got for this super long video so i'm out of here guys thanks for the love thanks for the subs peace